Psychedelic drugs have quickly become a very promising treatment avenue for psychiatric disorders like depression. But there may also be potential for the treatment of addictions. Today, I will be taking a look at a recent study investigating the use of psilocybin for the treatment of alcoholism. So stay tuned for some interesting results. Welcome to my channel. My name is Samuel Kohtala. I'm a neuropharmacologist studying the mechanisms of drug action in the brain. So today, I'll be taking a look at a recent study investigating the use of psilocybin combined with psychotherapy for the treatment of alcohol use disorder. The study in question was published in JAMA Psychiatry and looked at 95 heavy drinkers who went through 12 sessions of psychotherapy while getting two doses of psilocybin or an active placebo, which was the antihistaminergic drug diphenhydramine at 50 mg dose. The dose of psilocybin used was relatively high, 25 mg per 70 kg in the first session and 25 to 40 mg per 70 kg in the second session. These doses will produce a full-blown psychedelic experience, in most at least. In this study, the second dose was titrated based on the Pan K. Richards uh, mystical experience questionnaire, so that those who had a less robust subjective response to the lower dose received a larger dose in the second session. The dose of diphenhydramine was increased to 100 mg regardless of the subjective response. And this was in the second dosing. Indeed, the participants spent eight hours in the therapist's room, mostly listening to music and going through the experience. One of the subjects of this study, 69-year-old Mary Beth Orr, told the New York Times that she used to spend a lot of time thinking about not drinking every evening, and she wanted to stop, but couldn't. She described her psychedelic experience in the New York Times article, uh, and it included vivid splashes of color, fantastical creatures, and an emotional encounter with her deceased father. It was like a gorgeous show, with jewels and the sense of rushing through a tunnel, with deity figures looking down at me from niches in the walls. She detailed her experience in the article. More than three years later, after her last session, she said that she seldom drinks anymore and has her drinking under control. The main outcome of this study was the number of heavy drinking days after the first dosing session and throughout the 32-week uh, period following it. Here you can see the decrease in the percent of heavy drinking, drinking days and drinks per day during the study period. The arrows indicate the drug treatment sessions. Notably, you can see that the control group which received the active placebo diphenhydramine, a sedative antihistaminergic drug that generally produces a state of drowsiness and is commonly used as an over-the-counter sleep aid, also reduced their drinking. So this gives some kind of an idea of the magnitude of the effect that can be accounted by placebo, uh, expectancy effects and, and the psychotherapy itself. Nevertheless, the effects of psilocybin did separate from the placebo group in the primary outcome measure. Here, in this figure, you can see that the percentage of heavy drinking days for the study period was 9.7% for the psilocybin group and 23.6% for the diphenhydramine group, with a mean difference of 13.9%. The mean daily alcohol consumption was also lower in the psilocybin group. Altogether, 119 adverse events were reported in the psilocybin group and 85 in the diphenhydramine group. Serious adverse events only occurred in the diphenhydramine group. Now, this experiment was double-blinded, meaning that neither the subjects or the therapists or scientists treating them 
were meant to know which treatment group the patients were allocated to. But as in the case of many trials of psychedelic drugs, almost everyone guessed which treatment group they belonged to. To be more specific, patients guessed correctly in 93.6% of the first sessions and therapists 92.4% of the time. These results are still quite promising for psilocybin as a novel treatment of alcohol use disorder and perhaps addictions in general. But I think there are still critical issues that psychedelic research must account for in the future trials. Perhaps most importantly, the problem with the breaking of the blinding. Moreover, studies like this have rigorous criteria for patient exclusion, which means that we don't really know how patients beyond the carefully selected study participants respond to these treatments in real life situations. Indeed, some notable researchers have recently warned about the so-called psychedelic bubble, which may be about to burst. The term bubble here is used to describe something that has become overvalued in the public perception. Indeed, with psychedelic drugs, the general perception has rapidly turned from highly critical and negative views to overtly positive and enthusiastic views. For example, if you look at the number needed to treat in this study, even after 12 sessions of psychotherapy and two psilocybin doses, you can see that it doesn't really result in miracles. Towards the end of the study, 11 patients remained abstinent in the placebo group and 23 in the psilocybin group. Similarly, the trial where psilocybin was compared to an SSRI for the treatment of depression, the results were not as impressive as some expected. Check out my video psilocybin versus antidepressant for a perspective on that particular study. Now, this is common in drug research that when trial designs are made to be more rigorous and to represent real-world usage, the outcomes are no longer as dramatically positive as could be expected from smaller trials. But it can be clearly said with current knowledge that there is a real and promising therapeutic potential for psychedelic treatments. But ultimately, more research is still required. Luckily, the study's lead author, Dr. Bogenschutz, has mentioned that a larger trial encompassing around 200 patients is coming, and that this time they will be using uh, niacin as a placebo. And I'm really looking forward to the publication of that study in, in the future. In the meantime, if you're interested to learn more about the mechanisms of action of psychedelic drugs, or similar topics, uh, please check out my other videos. I have several videos related to the use of psychedelics as treatments or psilocybin in particular or their pharmacology. I have linked them down below in the description. And please let me know what you think about this study in the comments down below. Also remember to press like and subscribe to my channel for future neuropharmacology content. Thank you for watching and until next time.